Okay, so now that we've seen a few of these um, particular phase portraits, let's go to complex numbers ones. And we know that if we plug our complex numbers into, oh, I forgot my i here, into our general solution, I know that xy, again, will be a e to the a plus b i t times, we'll call it p1, I don't actually know the eigenvector, plus b e to the a minus b i t times p2. Now, with for this course, we will never have to find the eigenvectors if our eigenvalues are, are complex. So we do not need to find eigenvectors for this case. But I do want to talk about the general case. Imagine I multiply the, the t in, and so that means I have a e to the t times e to the b t i. Because when I add exponents, I'm actually multiplying uh, the bases. p1 plus b e to the, oh, I meant to say a t, not just t, a t, e to the a t times e to the minus b t p2. When I do that, you can see that that is common. And again, I forgot the i. Oh my goodness, it's late. So I pull out e to the a t. And inside I have a e to the b t i p1 plus b e to the negative b t i p2. Okay, and so now it all comes down to what happens with this term. If a is bigger than zero, so it means it's positive, then as t goes off to infinity, that means this here is going to be dominant. It's going to get really, really large. It's going to go outwards off to infinity. It goes off to infinity. However, if a is negative, if this is a negative value, well then this, as t goes to infinity, this term here is going to go towards zero. It's going to go into the origin, or this is going to go away from the origin. However, if a is equal to zero, well, then this term is just one. It doesn't do anything. And this just keeps working on itself. No matter what t does, it just keeps going. And what happens here? Well, if we think about complex numbers, this here is part of the angle of a complex number, right? And so what's happening here is this is a complex number with sine of this value here, the angle. So it's actually periodic. It's going to go round and round and round and round and round. And with no a value, it's going to be circular in nature, circular or maybe elliptical. But it's going to go round and round and round. Even these ones here, these ones are going to spiral because they are affected by this angle too. But they're going to spiral around and round and round. Both of these are going to spiral. This one will be unstable because it goes off to infinity. And this one is a stable spiral. And they sometimes call it a stable focus or an unstable focus or a circular focus. And so that's the general idea behind these ones. So let's actually take a look at one and see what happens. If I have this particular situation, I do not need to put the asymptotes on because I do not know the eigenvectors, but I know that a is equal to zero. So therefore, it's going to be circular around the origin, zero, zero. And so I know it's going to be circles. I know it's going to do this. Um, it says to put four. This one you'll probably get away with less. And this, because it is a circular focus. Now, to determine which way the arrows go, and this is important to do the arrows, I take a look at one of these points. And let's actually go back to our first principle. Let's put it into this equation. If I put one zero in, 
then I get 0 and negative 1. So at the point 1, 0, my vector is going this way. And so I am going around this way. They all go in the same direction and is going to go uh, clockwise this time. I could have also done this one and I would have gotten the same result. Looking at the actual one, here's my focus and as I come out you can see the arrow comes and they're nice perfect circles as we come out from there. Okay, so look at another example here. We have, again, we have complex values and in our A plus B I complex number I know that A is a positive value and so it is going to be spiral in nature and if we think about remember we had this term a to t i and then the stuff it's positive so that means as t goes to infinity this gets really large and so it's going outwards away from the center and so if I have my axis it's going to spiral and it's going to spiral out in a way so if I start from the center here I'm going to spiral away or if I start here I could spiral away I'm not very good at making spirals but I believe it's going outwards because A is this but I'll double check with one of these points if I take one zero in here if I plug one zero in, I get one minus zero is one. And if I go one plus zero, I get one. So at the point one zero, it is going in the one one direction. So it's going one one is this way. And so the arrows are definitely going out. And this is going in a counterclockwise direction. The name of this phase, well, because it's going away from the center, it is an unstable an unstable focus and it's a spiral. To see the real one again we have if we pull this point to the center we can see that it is an e a focus there and I pull it out I can see all my different kinds of uh, curves that come up to trajectories as it comes out um, and you get the sense of what's happening there. Okay so we have our last distinct case that we have to consider and this time it is complex and this time my a value is negative okay and so thinking about e to the a t if this a value is negative that means this computation is getting closer to zero it's spiraling in to the center it's going to be going coming in and so that what that means is going to be coming from the outside and it's going to be spiraling to the inside always spiral to the inside and so I believe the arrow is going to go this way because of that term what we can check with our point one zero so this will be zero and one will give negative one so at the point one zero I get the value zero negative one the vector is going down this way so it indeed is going down and so it's spiraling into the center and so this is a stable focus spiral. If we want to see, and this is the focus of 0, 0, if you want to see the real scenario, here's the stable, the equilibrium point. If you come out, you can see the arrows pull it all the way into the center. You can get another one coming out here. And you get a sense of what this particular uh, phase portrait looks like with the trajectories and that so to summarize all the ones here are the six this is the one when it is a real number and they're both positives it is going away it's unstable fixed point with the equilibrium being at the zero the saddle point when there's a positive and a negative it's a stable fixed point when they are real and both negative eigenvalues. You have to be able to get the eigenvectors here. When it's imaginary, if the A is positive, this is the A value is positive, it goes away from the center. If A equals zero, it's circular in nature. And if A is less than zero, 
then it spirals into the center of the stable spiral. And so for what you're responsible for, you are responsible to, if you are given both real or complex eigenvalues, you should be able to sketch the phase portrait and trajectories and describe the behavior of the system. So basically say what's on this table here. If they are real, you also have to do the eigenvectors and write the general solution and find a particular solution and be able to do the asymptotes, which is part of the describing the behavior of the system. If it's complex numbers, you don't have to do this last part.